I've played some wonderful characters throughout the whole series of films. Swish and flick, everyone. In the first film, I've played Professor Flitwick and also the Goblin Bank Teller. Does Mr. Harry Potter have his key? And then, as the films have gone on again, I've played Flitwick, and now in the final film, I'm able to play Grip Hook as well. The role of Grip Hook was something that I always had at the back of my mind. Boy, I'd love that character. There is no place safer than Gringotts. Grip Hook has so much more depth to him that I've ever been able to get into my work as Professor Flitwick. And so I went in and read from David Yates and our casting director and gave him a best shot. David left a message to tell me that I had the part. And it was funny, I was sort of in shock. I just sat there for a minute, it was like, great, okay, here we go, the journey commences. Better, because I haven't had a chance to suss it out properly then. That's why I wanted, yeah. I suppose I'm stretching my my acting muscles a little bit farther than I have been able to in previous films, because uh, he's a very much darker character and quite a multi-layered character. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a ball cap on you, um, and Adrian's going to do that, and he's also, he'll be the nose man, so he's going to watch your nose at all times. Right. And we'll ask you all the way through it if you're okay, and it's thumbs up, not so, too high, because of okay. nothing. <laughs> um, what signals like if I want that I'm thirsty? Ah. <laughs> 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 The makeup is obviously a very important part of what I do and the creation of that character. It's not just down to me, it's a team effort to bring him to the screen. We're doing a makeup test on Warwick Davis, because he's all we could get at short notice. <laughs> and um, for Grip Hook. With Grip Hook, we looked at what we did on the first picture with the film Troyer. He had a particular look, so we took that look and we transpose that look onto Warwick. Contrary to, uh, to popular belief, I don't look like a goblin in real life. <laughs> so uh, without all of this and without these two here and all the other people that go to put the makeups together, I wouldn't be able to do the work that I do because I don't look right. I, I'm too good looking. <laughs> Makeup is only so good up to the point where a guy's got to operate it with his facial muscles and work through it and everything. It's, it's for example, I know my own face, so I know, you know, if I raise an eyebrow, how that looks basically. But on the character makeups, you have to learn kind of how much of an eyebrow raise you have to do for it actually to read and register as an eyebrow raise on the character's makeup, for example. So. That's kind of what I'm still learning about. When you get somebody who really can use a makeup, can perform it, your work just improves and improves and improves. And so I've been very fortunate working with Warwick. It is important you don't rely on the makeup. You've got to find that character within you. But then to have gone through three hours of makeup and then stand in front of the mirror and see yourself transform, it, it, it's a wonderful feeling. And um, you know, I feel very privileged to be able to, to kind of portray these characters that I have in these films. Hello. Ready for the office. 